a video on the YouTube channel, Mark Ellis Reviews. I'd watch a couple of his because he occasionally, like, he has some sort of um, interesting, um, uh, I don't know, full and frank uh, kind of admissions that sometimes you don't see um, on some other channels. Um, and he f- was freely talking about the, this idea of uh, clickbaiting um, in uh, <clears throat> in a smartphone review, for instance, um, in order to get... Um, to trick, well, trick, I guess would be the way to call it, the the YouTube algorithm into directing traffic to the video. And he kind of utilized this um, uh, example where he put a video up um, with a title that apparently didn't work and it tanked, it didn't get views. And then he went in later, changed it to a clickbait headline and all of a sudden it it didn't like top his videos, but it went real close to the top in terms of generating view count. And um, I, I guess I wanted to dwell on this from the perspective that it's interesting that, um, you know, you have to jump through these hoops because he also made the point that if you're in the top tier YouTube content creator community, you actually don't have to do this because they just give the, the traffic to you already, which then leads me to think that they are now, this algorithm and their platform is like um, the ultimate gatekeeper for content creation and YouTube is really the only one. And it's kind of interesting that it's sort of segued from like the good old days where you would go to movie studios or TV channels, TV networks, I guess, um, to get your content um, broadcast and you'd have to go through them and satisfy all their requirements. But instead of now, instead of, um, you know, um, negotiating with a a couple of guys in a boardroom or something, um, you're dealing with an algorithm that's kind of effectively doing the same thing, but it's just not a person you're dealing with now. Um, I just find that interesting that that's kind of where it gravitated towards when we're supposed to be in the democratization of the internet and anyone can do anything. Yeah, look, I I totally agree. I mean, I don't know what the situation is now, say, with app stores, but originally, certainly five or six years ago, Apple was still uh, curating with a human, you know, like uh, their apps and, and promoting certain apps. Uh, you know, through a human sort of response. I don't know now whether that's become an algorithm. I think, you know, with music the way it is now, uh, they're using algorithms more and more to predict uh, what might be popular or what might uh, sell. And I think, you know, you can do it with video, you can do it with SEO, with with titling, with, with knowing what users' patterns are. I mean, I think there's two parts to this. It's not, not just that... It, you can put a clickbait heading on uh, to a video, but there's now, I mean, Google knows, or, or YouTube, if you want to separate it down, knows what people respond to and knows what they want to see. And um, I wonder, you know, if you can really post a video now, because I've certainly seen them, that has very little to do uh, with uh, the title. And, uh, you know, you see traffic going there and and you just wonder, a bit like Avatar, (laughs) the video is not very satisfying when when you get there, but, geez, it's got a lot of views. (laughs) I don't, you know, is that the way the world's going? Are are we becoming more tuned to algorithms or are we actually being trained or tricked to um, accept this as normal? Mm. And the one, the one other thing that I wanted to um, mention, which I saw in a different video actually, was this whole thing about subscriber count and how even if you've got like a million subscribers, it doesn't mean that um, that video is go- the the new video you put up actually gets fed to them. Like that's that's kind of where it's gotten to now. So you would think that okay, maybe not all of them would have seen it, but if you've got a million subscribers, you'd you'd probably expect a couple of hundred thousand views off the bat. But apparently that's not guaranteed because the algorithm is still SEOing you out of existence if it doesn't like uh, the the title or whatnot. That's right. And that's really the point I was trying to make before, which is they know what people want to watch and they probably have a number of algorithms in there that are selecting that. And one's also, you know, your ability to promote or create, I guess, revenue for for YouTube uh, through it, and it knows it know, also knows what its relevance would be to each viewer. So, I, I don't think any of us on the outside can actually understand what what level of sophistication there is in the AI and the back end. 
but I, I think it, it would be playing into this at a number of levels, the revenue level, uh, the interest level and engagement level. Mm, very interesting though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, we might wrap it up there, Steve. Um, uh, interesting um, that, that, that that whole thing about YouTube, etc., because um, uh, it is a way for people to get out. But it's interesting how um, maybe a lot of um, platforms, once they either consolidate and mature, whether they're analog, digital, internet, whatever, it's funny how they always sort of start to go down a similar path over time as they become big enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. I think, you know, when you think of the scale of YouTube, you know, or any of your socials, there's no way any human could curate or make these decisions. You have to go to an algorithm. And, uh, you know, the problem or the downside of that, it's not a problem. I guess just the downside of that is algorithms, you know, work the same way every time. And eventually the data, as it becomes smarter, reinforces uh, I guess the the, the algorithms uh, outcomes, and because of that, you you then actually end up with a very narrow band or a very narrow scope of product of engagement of interest, uh, and you lose the joy of discovery because you just won't find some things even if you search for them uh, because they sit outside the parameters that are either around your profile or around the uh, profile of the content. So, yeah, it's fascinating. I wish I wish someone would come out and explain a little bit more to us about how it all works. I'd love to know. Mm. Well, in the meantime, it probably means like if you see a title on this particular video that says something like five reasons why Avatar 2 sucks, that might be there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Why don't you try it out? Yeah, I might, I might just do that. 